turn it to manual because as I mentioned before we want to control all of the settings and then you can turn it on. So what's the difference between the even illumination of the light box and the copy stand? If you were um, a well-trained photographer you might really clearly be able to see the difference. For the amateur maybe not. You can see a little less detail in the copy stand image than the photo e-box. Mike, Mike did this independent study to see if there really was a difference and he, and he believes that there is with the same, uh, same lens although different f-stop and shutter speed he still finds that the, the even illumination provides a little bit more focus. And then we compare an image to what comes out of the herb scan and at 100% magnification from the camera, 100% magnification from the herb scan, we can see this is a much, big, much bigger image, much more taxonomically informative, uh, which is great when we're thinking about what we want of our type collections. What are the costs? For just the imaging station with the camera and the copy stand and the lights, our um, our station at New York costs about this. One thing I neglected to mention is the price of the color checker. That little thing that shows you the values for red, green, and blue and all the colors on the squares, $165. There are cheaper alternatives to this, for sure. Gaffer tape, that black gaffer tape that people who work on movie sets or tape down cables works really nicely for photography. It doesn't leave a gluey residue, it rips really easily. And then, of course, Photoshop Lightroom for managing your images after the fact. So what kind of software do we need to go with our hardware? Well, we need something that will, from the computer, operate the camera. All of the things we want to change on, on our camera and activate on our camera, take the pictures we want to do, everything from the computer, so I don't have to touch the camera at all. The less I touch the camera, the better, because if I touch it, I run the risk of jiggling it and having my, my image be out of focus. What else do I need? I need software that allows me to see, to see the pictures I generate. If we're capturing in raw image file format, not very many um, out of the box or out of the, the laptop box come software that will open raw image files. So you need one that, that will do that. And you need uh, software to edit the images in case there's anything you need to tweak or adjust. And it's helpful to have software that'll catalog your images so you know how many you have of what and embed metadata, et cetera, we'll go over that. And then with regard to uh, image focus stacking software, if you're photographing insects, this can be really helpful um, for stacking several images of one specimen together so you get uh, an image in the end that looks like it's in three dimension or every plane of the specimens in focus and Christiana is going to talk about that a bit. So for remote image capture software out of the box comes or with the Canon camera out of the box comes EOS utility which from the computer turns the all of the settings in the camera and allows you to um, allows you to press the shutter button from the camera and it operates on Windows or Mac so um, for a Nikon the remote camera software is this camera control pro 2 unfortunately it doesn't come with the camera um, it does come with a different type of software but not this one so in order to operate the camera remotely you have to buy this one I can't remember what the price is for that and then Lightroom Lightroom allows you to shoot from your computer and Aperture. Once we've captured the images we need to be able to see them. Out of the box with the Canon camera comes Digital Photo Professional. It allows you to see all the images that you're taking, view them at high magnification, make sure everything's in focus. Same with Nikon camera, this one comes in the box. Oh, I have sold separately there, that's not true comes in the box and Lightroom again will, allow, will show you the images as will Aperture. Aperture is Mac only, it's proprietary, it costs $80 um, and photo, er, Lightroom is $150 but if any of you are students or teachers maybe it's possible to get a, a huge discount on that. 
Um, what's the difference between image editing and image cataloging software? Some do one or the other, some do both. And is it the case that when some do both, they don't do either great? Um, how many of you have used Photoshop before? Couple, yeah. So the capabilities are beyond my comprehension. You, there's a lot you can do in Photoshop than you would likely ever really need to do as the average person. Um, Lightroom, which is also from Adobe, has some of those features, um, but not all. It's more an image catalog than it is image editing software, but it has imaging, image editing capabilities, which maybe for the average user is sufficient. Um, and Photoshop doesn't allow you to see a catalog of your images. It allows you to see the images that you're editing. That's it. Aperture is an image editor and an image catalog, just like Lightroom. I've never used it personally to know how the edi image editing capabilities are. Um, Capture One Pro. This one's kind of expensive. I don't know that anyone would even consider it, but it gets huge reviews from professional photographers. Maybe it's a group of people who are in contrast or not wanting to use Photoshop, I can't say. And then there's a, a free one called GIMP that has uh, a lot of positive reviews too. So it's worth considering. And it runs on Linux, which is a good plus. Yeah? Why do you have uh, Photoshop at a cost per month? It's in the cloud now. You cannot buy one license anymore. It used to be you go to the store, you buy the disc, it's yours. Not anymore. I shouldn't say this on YouTube, but what a bunch of bastards. <laughs> yeah, it's become a monthly thing or a yearly thing. Yeah. Again, I think they, prob I think they may have um, student teacher discounts but it is a subscription now. Isn't that nice? And then these are, uh, I'm going to show you now just a couple of image stacking softwares. I'm not going to show you what they can do, but there are some really cool videos online that show you how they put these together. So um, you're, one can do this in Photoshop, really easy. I have found this um, YouTube video really helpful. So even if you're an amateur photographer out in the field and you want to capture an insect here in the moment, you can easily do this then too. Um, and insect collections uh, work well when you're in the, the uh, museum too. So this one's done with Photoshop. This one's a, a piece of software called Helicon Focus Pro. Um, I don't know what kind of reviews, maybe Chris, I think Christiana is going to talk about these, but it comes, there are three different parts, one that controls the camera and the other, or the camera lens, and the other that stacks them together. So you can refer to this later for URLs, these are all live URLs. And then this is another one, oh that's, I forgot to change the name on this, excuse me, this is supposed to be Zareen Stacker. So this one's $40 student edition. Forget that top, Zareen Stacker. I think Christian's going to talk about it. So with that, we're through with the hardware and software. We kind of have an idea of what our imaging station consists of. How do we take pictures? The fun part. How are we on time? Yeah? Could you go back to your cost slide? No, the previous cost slide, the hardware one. Yeah. So I was a little confused because you have both the copy stand and the e-box. Yes. So if we wanted to set up a unit, we don't have to buy both of them. Nope. The copy stand is just a copy stand. Okay. It is different manufacturer, different seller, everything. Right. But in terms of a total. So yeah. So this is for the NYBG setup. In New York, we have this specific copy stand. What? That copy stand doesn't come with lights. We use the copy stand to hold the camera, and the light box is using the lights. So we still need both of that side. Right. Now I understand. You could replace the light box with um, side, side lights. Side lights, okay. yes. 
No, Does everybody no. follow that? Yeah? No? Blank stairs? So the copy stand is just holding just the Just to hold the camera up. And it can be looking down into the box, or yes. it could be looking in between lights. Exactly. That, now I understand. Thank yes. you. Yes. How do we do photo microphotography? How do we what? Photo microphotography. That is what Christiane is going to talk about because she has personal experience with that. I don't have personal experience with that except maybe a few demonstrations I've seen. So she can talk about pros and cons of some softwares and how they really do it. So first we'll talk about um, the actual process of capturing images of herbarium specimens. Then we'll move on to other specimens including pinned and spirit collections. <coughs> Let me run back there. About uh, four months. Four months? Yeah, about uh, four months, uh, raw and uh, TIFF. Yes. Yeah, so uh, what difference uh, taking acquaint sensibility or fiability or clarity? Yes. It's a great question, and um, I have an answer, but would you be willing to wait until the end of the last session? So in the end of one of my presentations, I talk about file formats, yeah. all about RAW, uh, TIFF, TIFF, JPEG, TIFF. and different types of RAW. Yeah. So it, within that moment in time, we could talk about it. Is that okay? okay. And if we don't answer your question, please ask again. Okay, the second one. Take yes. Taking uh, uh, into account uh, uh, financial resources yeah. and uh, the need, what uh, compatibility to, to have the best image? So given certain resources. Yeah. <sighs> Well, you need a camera that has been found. If, uh, if you can, a, a DSLR with a full frame, 18 megapixels, raw image file format, format. If not that, then you need full sensor, as high a number of megapixels as you can. Um, a camera that has, if it's not, um, a lens that you can remove, then make sure it's a lens that will allow you to have um, the specimen within a, a good distance, it, that it has good reviews for the quality of the lens. Um, sometimes cameras uh, aren't so great. The lens, the quality of the lens, the glass, the way it's made isn't as good as some others. So look into that too. Um, I don't know, does that, do you, do you feel like that answers the question? Mm -hmm. I know, I think, I think the heart of your question is that, what camera do I buy? I have this much money, which camera, which lens, or which camera combined with the lens do I buy? And that is individual. And I think the only way we can figure out what's best is if we, if we meet one-on-one -on -one and if you're really interested in, in looking for a comp uh, camera, we can list all of the things that, that you want to photograph and try and find one that matches that. So we'll find a camera that's either combined camera and lens or if we can, a DSLR that has the camera body and the lens and figure out which lens would work best for your situation or which lens is. Um, because it'll be case by case specific. If you're shooting herbarium specimens and only herbarium specimens, this works really well. And actually, we shoot um, three.